Okay, thank you, Jacqueline. I appreciate you having me on, having um, giving me the opportunity to be able to talk a little bit about some of the work that uh, is going on here at Baptist Memorial Healthcare and the various entities. Um, so I'm going to be talking today about how CADA is being used to deploy TWI at Baptist Memorial Healthcare and want to talk with you up front about um, one of the key points first that then we'll draw to conclusion toward the end which is my belief uh, one of the keys to any success for any endeavor is a combination of endurance plus discipline uh, equaling success. So I'd like to start out with just a quote, uh, one of my favorites and one I always like to hear narrated or, and hear uh, other speakers talk about, you've probably heard it before, it's from Teddy Roosevelt, uh, it's on endurance and, and discipline. It says, um, it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again, because there's no, there is no effort without error or shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold, timid souls who ne neither know victory nor defeat. Um, so I always like that. I've always liked that particular quote, and how it applies. I'll start to bring you up to speed on a timeline uh, from roughly January of 2014 until now. Uh, and how you, you probably can see through uh, some of the things I'm going to talk about how endurance and discipline are, have been the keys that's been propelling uh, Baptist forward uh, with uh, the deployment of these uh, thinking patterns, these methodologies, and some of these uh, uh, lean tools. Um, January 2014 is the rough uh, start date uh, back when TWIJI was first uh, started at the Baptist DeSoto Hospital in South Haven, Mississippi. Uh, around June of 2014, uh, or summer of 2014, TWIJI was uh, started at the NEA Baptist Hospital and NEA Clinic in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Uh, later that summer and closer to the fall, TWIJI uh, was introduced at Baptist Collierville Hospital in Collierville, Tennessee. And any of the Baptist entities that are online, if these dates are off just a little bit, they're just approximations uh, to give the audience a, an idea of the timeline. Around October 2014, TWIJI was introduced to Baptist Golden Triangle in Columbus, Mississippi. Around January of 2015, TWIJR at NEA Baptist Hospital and NEA Clinic in Jonesboro um, uh, was uh, introduced the uh, process there of going from job instructions to job relations uh, was the next step, the next uh, phase in the, uh, in the deployment process. From spring 2015 through the spring of 2016, TWI-JI expanded very rapidly through many of Baptist's uh, 19 hospitals. Around April and May of 2016, we began experimenting with the use of CADA to deploy TWI job instruction as well as TWI job relations with some external coaching at the NEA Baptist Hospital and NEA Clinic in Jonesboro, Arkansas. September of 2016, we began experimenting with what we have termed a TWI job instruction shepherding group at the Baptist Memorial Hospital in Memphis, in Memphis, Tennessee, and the NEA Baptist Hospital and NEA Clinic in Jonesboro, Arkansas. About the same time, we began using CADA to deploy TWI job instructions at other facilities and other entities such as the Baptist Golden Triangle Hospital in Columbus, Mississippi, as well as incorporating CADA and TWI at North Mississippi and Oxford. And as recent as October of 2016, the first annual Baptist TWI Summit was held at Baptist Golden Triangle Hospital in Columbus, Mississippi. Many hospitals within Baptist attended and shared successes as well as their struggles um, at that particular summit uh, down in Columbus. So currently some approximate numbers to catch you up with kind of where we're at uh, today. We have 45 certified TWI JI train the trainers that can teach the 10-hour job instruction class at Baptist. There's six certified TWI job relations train the trainers that can teach the 10-hour job relations class as well as the foundations. 
J.I. and J.R. have been taught well over a hundred times or more at Baptist to several hundred people. And Baptist has worked with the TWI Institute to actually make TWI materials that fit healthcare. So any of the healthcare uh, listeners that are out there, you could call up TWI Institute. You'd see pictures from uh, Baptist uh, uh, associates and employees, nurses, directors, uh, and so forth, actually doing job instructions uh, and, and, uh, and, and doing the job breakdowns. We have one TWI job methods class that has been taught at NEA Baptist Hospital in Jonesboro, Arkansas, most recently uh, this, uh, this last month at the, in the emergency department. So there's many ways to get from here to there. Um, success, uh, many times people uh, think that it's a straight line. It really gets kind of messy sometimes. So we looked at possibly strategic A3 deployment, which Baptists use to deploy their strategy. Um, and possibly using that as a method. Uh, Skip Stewart, the Chief Improvement Officer, and I, as well as Patrick Gropp and several of the entities talked about how we should go forward. Hoshin Connery is also an effective uh, strategy deployment using X matrix uh, processes to deploy strategy, uh, another excellent method. Uh, we could use traditional project management. That could have been a, a, a route that we selected uh, using Gantt charts and resource constraints and resource requirements with due dates and milestones. But within the Baptist management system, we decided to do an experiment. Why not try Kata for your TWI deployment? And the concept of using a shepherding group, or a group that actually shepherds and steers and manages the process, uh, was uh, conceived. And we've started that process both for deployment of Kata, but in particularly shepherding our TWI deployment. So for those of you that may not be familiar with Kata, what is a Kata? Uh, if you've not uh, read the book by Mike Rother or been to Katacon or any of the other materials that are out there, they're practice routines. Kata are structured routines that where you deliberately practice at the beginning so the pattern becomes a meta habit and leaves you with new abilities. Uh, you see on the left there, uh, my son taking a, uh, or doing a violin concert. When he first started taking the violin lessons, or if any of you have ever played an instrument, you know that one of the first things that you do is you play the scales, you learn the octaves, all the notes all the way up the scale and down the scale. And if, and if you are continuing to play an instrument, that may be one of the first things that you do as you warm up and prepare to play. That's a kata, that's a habit that, that, you've, that you've done in order to get yourself ready. Um, if you think back to driving a car, um, at, uh, this same son of mine is learning to drive right now and um, it, it can be quite a frightful situation uh, when you are in a park, em empty parking lot and you say, now push on the brake gently, and he looks down and actually pushes the brake, and I say, you can't look, you can't look down, it's got to be a feel thing. We don't think about those things, but a 14, 15, 16-year-old, and when you and I were learning to drive, we did the same things. It wasn't a habit, it wasn't a meta habit for us. So caught our use for learning fundamentals to build on the way of transferring skills and developing shared abilities and mindset, and that's from Mike Rother's uh, handbook that particular explanation. Uh, so what drew us to using COT over other deployments? Well, we wanted a process that aligned strategically. In other words, we don't train just to train. Uh, we didn't want that uh, uh, process uh, for Baptist. Uh, we wanted a process that was sustainable, low chance of scope creep. Uh, what gave us the best possibility to, to reduce that or eliminate that? We wanted daily deliberate attention via coached practice to ensure that we were forming habits. We wanted a process whereby one or two individuals didn't have to shoulder the burden. We wanted to promote teamwork from top down as well as horizontally throughout the organization. And we wanted to form a network whereby individual hospital entities could share success as well as the struggles that they were facing. So our first experimenting with this was a TWIJI shepherding group at Baptist Memphis. And the concept here is that they would guide the long-term deployment of TWI using CADA actually having coaching sessions with a learner and coach daily and then weekly sessions with the shepherding group was comprised of five to six individual senior leaders uh, who are TWI certified trainers plus one or two at the executive level, uh, at, the, at the CNO level or at the C level of the organization. They're charged with developing target conditions to achieve concrete outcome metrics as they advance toward the overarching challenge and monitor actual performance of progress of the plan relative to their responsibilities for areas such as auditing draft jibs and validating the training process, seeking out areas that may be uh, struggling and offer support, 
uh, actual attainment of those target conditions toward meaningful organizational objectives, and also the development of TWI trainer and job skills within targeted team members uh, within the organization. So again, if you're not familiar with a challenge, that's a portion uh, of the uh, first part of the improvement kata. The role of the challenge in the organization is one where the leadership establishes from the vision the organization's strategic concept, their rallying point, their overall direction, and those are usually vague, general, overarching, where do we want to be in the next hundred years here at Baptist. Managers then develop the people through coached practice of the improvement kata in that direction of the challenge. So many times we call this the kata trajectory. And that challenge is what links the vision of the leadership to the daily functions of managers, managing nurses, head nurses, charge nurses, directors as well uh, throughout the organization. Typically a one to three year challenge is put out there and most of these shepherding groups uh, that are using this process do have a one year challenge. So here's one uh, from Baptist Memphis and I always like to use a fun word. It would be catastic or catastic if by 930 2017 Baptist Memphis has achieved clinical trainer ratios of one to seven and clinical trainer ratios of one to ten and consistently using JI tools to train staff on a minimum of three jibs per department. So we achieve and you can see all of the different metrics there uh, that we're, we're trying to achieve um, from alignment of the JIB training with strategic A3s to the JIBs going through an approval process with the SharePoint site. Uh, the various nurse to trainer ratios we're, sh we're striving for is a one to seven. The clinical non-nursing also a one to seven a trainer to staff ratio. The non-clinical trainers we decided one to ten was a number we would start to strive and experiment forward for as well as training on these three JIBs per department. Uh, validating at the skill level at each quarter end and TWI trainer skill levels you can see there the breakout of beginner to moderate to high uh, levels among the trainer skills and that the metrics would be aligned with jib training in at the target or the challenge so here's just a quick example of a, of a storyboard a virtual board that they're using to go from a current condition to a target condition the process here is the deployment of wave one and wave two job instruction breakdown sheets. You can see their process metrics on the number of trainers that they have and their nursing ratios and then their outcome metrics. How well are they doing toward that? And in particular down there at the bottom this first uh, particular job instruction was around uh, CAUTI rates and uh, where they wanted to be in, in FY17 versus 16 and 15. The team has parking lot, obstacle parking lots just like a traditional CAUTI uh, format would have with a learner and a coach. You can see there are some of the highlighted uh, job instructions and each shepherd then that attends this session would then take one of these obstacles and create their own PDCA cycles records uh, which would then be collected back by the learner and the coach and so weekly the shepherds are progressing toward this target condition by conducting individual PDCA cycles around those particular obstacles. Uh, the shepherding group at Baptist the areas that they first started with or wanted to start with from the leadership there uh, at the CNO level were safety and quality areas uh, such as hand hygiene, uh, catheter associated urinary tract infections or CAUTIs, central line associated bloodstream infections or CLABSI, as well as fall prevention and pa patient safety. So those were the strategic ones that we started with that the shepherding group is is uh, rolling out and, and uh, working within each of the uh, units, both clinical and non-clinical, as, uh, uh, as they are affected. Uh, here's just a quote uh, from uh, Judy Mann in education. Uh, and uh, the results I kind of speak a little bit for themselves, I would say, for February, physical year of 15 uh, all the way down to physical year 16 and current year physical year of 17, a reduction in the actual uh, first quarter to quarter comparisons almost 50 percent uh, and then the totals for the years coming down dramatically. Uh, Judy says because of TWI, JI shepherding Cotta, we've had we have had to plan and control deployment with follow-up validation. We've seen wonderful outcomes in many areas. Most significantly would be the deployment of Foley insertion and pericare uh, job instruction breakdowns to nursing with a contingency that only nurses who have received jib training can insert Foley catheters. We're confident this has led to the steady decline in CAUTI events in our hospital due to the 
JIB, the TWI training, and the validation ongoing. TWI training with the JIB has provided our staff and training with tools for standard work to prevent harm and reduce infections related to Foley uh, catheters. You can kind of see from month to month that we're three months into, we're getting into our fourth month now of using the shepherding group there. Uh, the number of nursing trainers uh, has moved from 77 up to 142, clinical trainers from 55 to 78, and non-nursing trainers uh, at, uh, at two to three. Uh, the percentages that they measure as one of their uh, metrics is how much of the nurse to trainer ratios do they have in their departments that are reaching that one to seven ratio and in non-clinical one to ten. And you can see there the progression from month one to month two to month three from 35 percent roughly to 62 percent for the nursing, uh, 71 up to 82 percent for the clinical and non-nursing. That's just one of the metrics. So another quote from Judy Mann. Uh, in regards to the uh, TWI-JI Shepherding Group, pioneering the Kata TWI Shepherd Group has been a challenging journey that's shown great outcomes for the members of our staff and our patients. Without the leadership of the Shepherd, we are certain that TWI training and the use of JIBs and continued deployment, especially in the clinical areas, uh, service departments such as the lab, radiology, blood bank, that TWI would not have been embraced and integrated into practice in the positive manner that they have seen. Thus, our outcomes would have been reduced and processes less uh, effective. So moving on to the, another area of TWI job relations at NEA Baptist. Um, I mentioned that they uh, started the deployment there in uh, January of 2016, uh, and then we started using uh, TWI there in, in approximately April of that year. Uh, their challenge would it be outstanding if by 12-31-2017 NEA Baptist has a method to verify to what extent the JR four-step method and four foundations are being utilized to limit the number of critical problems brought from the director or manager level to the HR for resolution and JR is applied consistently across the NEA health system so that we achieve in the four areas of the outcome metrics is a 4.15 score on the foundation less than 126 written warnings, which is a 10% reduction, less than 35 involuntary terminations, a 10% reduction, and 100% of all managers and directors are trained on job relations. Here's another copy of their uh, electronic or, or virtual storyboard as they move from their current condition to their target condition. You can see their process characteristics that they're measuring uh, at each stage or each state uh, in two-week increments. Uh, they're measuring written warnings and involuntary terminations as process metrics uh, toward their total outcome metrics of how they're pacing uh, for the entire year. Again, they have obstacle parking lots as well. Uh, they flag the obstacles they're using, such as here managers are only using the four-step method for large problems. They're not using it for small issues in order to avoid large disciplinary issues. So that's an area that James is working on with a particular PDCA, um, and he and his coach go through this session on a, on a regular basis on what's their step, what do they expect, and then conduct the experiment or conduct the, uh, the PDCA, uh, capture their results, and then reflect on what they learned during the process. So some of the key learnings and some of the data, you can see the red line there, 2015, the typical sawtooth pattern of, of variation from month to month in uh, involuntary terminations. The blue line there in 2016, uh, shows a little bit steadier of a process. It is an increase. And so one of the key learnings there is, according to James Keller, Director of the Human Resources at NEA Baptist Memorial Hospital, he says, we did see a trend in the number of increases in involuntary terminations after the job relations training due to the fact that our managers had the tools now to properly address the issues. Um, so they were taking care of some situations that maybe previously weren't being taken care of in the path, past. Uh, and so you can kind of see a little bit steadier of a process going on there in 2016. From a written warning standpoint, uh, the blue line there is 2015, uh, and you can see there that uh, in uh, 2016, the purple line, we started using COTA around April when they had at their highest point around 22 uh, as far as the number of written warnings, and then we steadily have decreased. We've had some up and down patterns on that on the purple line there, but uh, definitely staying below the blue line, which was 2015's number, 
and then this year starting out January with uh, only one. His key learning there, James says, is because of Kata, we feel there was a steady decline in written warnings because job relations provided tools to our managers so they could begin to address issues early instead of waiting until the situation actually blew up. Uh, so I think you can see that when the data speaks for itself, but that's James's key takeaway. Uh, his final quote there as far as uh, J.R. Kata and the use of that uh, at Indian Baptist, he says, because of using Kata to deploy TWIJR, we've been able to properly implement the four foundations across the organization to help managers stay ahead of trouble areas and either address them early or prevent them from happening altogether. Using Kata to deploy TWIJR has laid the foundation on which we can provide a structure to continue to improve the way in which we perform and deploy TWI job relations. Without Kata, we would have been lost. Kata truly is a remarkable thinking pattern and a routine and one that has kept us grounded and driven to continue to improve our TWI job relations process. So by meeting every day in front of the virtual storyboard with this coach and by doing a, just a small improvement or a small progress with the process every day, we've been able to avoid some of that scope creep. Not without struggles, obviously, uh, not without some uh, um, some uh, endurance required along the way and some dis discipline required to meet regularly. Um, I think James would say that those are have been some of the challenges that they, they faced. Um, one of the areas that I uh, wanted to highlight that uh, I think is unique at Baptist is uh, the work that Patrick Groff has helped the organization with and what we call deep dives, or utilizing a deep dive methodology. Uh, a deep dive at Baptist uh, is when we take a group of people who have skin in the game and on a particular task and for whatever reason uh, it needs to be trained and performed more consistently in the hospital or the clinic and once someone or a group of people have gone through the 10-hour course and started going through their own job instruction breakdown sheets, what they've actually uh, been able to do is go out and try and apply those job instruction breakdowns or road test them as it's termed. They found that they have some very complex jobs that almost everyone's doing a little bit differently. And these sessions can be anywhere from five to eight hours of writing, coming to the consensus on important steps, key points, testing and experimenting, then rewriting, and then agreeing on the reasons why, because we want to make sure that we get it right. We want to get it right for patient care. So those are what we would call a deep dive uh, session that Patrick has been able to, to help uh, Baptist with. And uh, we want to acknowledge him and thank him. He gave us a quote. He says, more than anything else, it's been a tremendous learning experience for me to work with the fine people of Baptist Memorial Healthcare in service of their facilities throughout the Mid-South. Uh, they've been my teachers. Patrick says, I have watched them uh, across, the board, across the board transform into a Kaizen-oriented mindset where they no longer accept healthcare delivery as, quote, just the way it's done. They now actively look under every corner to find improvement to do the work more efficiently, with more stability, and in a way that truly delivers outstanding outcomes to patients. Most of all, they look into the people side of doing the work and recognize that only through engaging true principles of leadership will an organization be motivated to deliver on the high goals they are striving to achieve. So we want to thank Patrick for the work that he's done here and the help that he's given uh, as far as training and deep dives at Baptist. We also want to let you know that uh, the TWI Summit that is coming up, you can come out and hear Patrick speak in San Diego at the TWI Summit. He's going to be on day one doing a keynote on the TWI uh, on an international scale. There's a lot of opportunities at the TWI Summit and Kata Summit to be able to uh, hear some healthcare related uh, um, keynotes as well as some breakout sessions. Skip Stewart is going to be doing a presentation on Kata Plays Well with Others. Uh, we've got people coming up from uh, Golden Triangle, from North Mississippi. They're going to be doing uh, some live coaching sessions. Uh, Beth Carrington and myself have a, a healthcare panel where they'll be doing some live coaching sessions on IV starts and the great work that they've been doing uh, at North Mississippi. Uh, so it's a, it's a great opportunity to come out if you're in the healthcare industry uh, to be able to see some of the work that's being done uh, and how that's uh, been going here at Baptist. Uh, so uh, where is Baptist going from here? Well, the next uh, J uh, program that we've been looking at is uh, job methods. And the first session with Patrick Gropp was held at NEA Baptist. You can see there's some of the action shots of them in the ED department breaking down the job and really taking apart uh, that working pattern 
and then looking to see where they can be, be improved. Uh, and then we go right then uh, to a COTA board, which they have in the emergency department, and start to try and work toward this target condition working pattern that, that we've been able to go through with job methods. So another great, um, another great tool that we're, uh, we've been able to use. Uh, we've had a Baptist, uh, the first annual TWI summit at, back in October of 2016 at Golden Triangle in Columbus, Mississippi. Patrick came and we did a deep dive there. Uh, entities from all over uh, Baptist came and joined in on that. It was a great learning time. They also shared their shepherding group uh, successes and struggles. Uh, they shared some of how their job instructions were being used within their kata uh, improvement cycles as well. So uh, bringing kind of to a conclusion here, the endurance plus discipline uh, equals success. I wanted to go through some of the PDCA cycles from some of the shepherding groups and let you know that it hasn't all been a primrose path. Uh, there's been struggles, there's been issues of trying to get everyone together, trying to have these daily cycles as with, as with any discipline that you're trying to, to go through. But here's a key learning from one PDCA. They learned that the best process uh, for job instruction job instruction breakdown reconstruction is to have the author meet with the shepherd and teach the jib to an innocent non-knowing person and treat the experience just as we do teaching in class. This allows us to provide constructive critiques, help the author identify deficiencies, and uh, make corrections together. Uh, and they came to a lesson learned uh, before they were actually doing this in, uh, in their processes is that all who attend the class are not necessarily prepared to author job instruction breakdowns. A few more here uh, on getting the TWI shepherds together for, for kata. Uh, they learned from this first particular step uh, on the discussion of TWI kata shepherds regarding how shepherds want to audit the forms uh, and compliance to the JIB training. Uh, they found that flexibility and alternate work methods uh, was one area that they learned uh, as well as there was a struggle. Communication with the whole kata shepherd group and conflicting schedules arose and uh, alternative, me alternative methods were needed to be sought out over and over. Uh, another struggle uh, from where they uh, learned that the target condition draft required some discussion and revision but ended up with a good challenge. Uh, toward the end of December there, the step was for them to reset the target condition uh, and they had some challenge uh, in being able to do that. The struggle or the aha was that shepherding groups uh, and the kata process must stay far ahead uh, Real-time work can end in numerous uh, delays. Uh, more, the more we progress in this process, the more we're gathering a good platform for working and making a difference in patient care and outcomes. Uh, several more there um, as far as placing an agenda on the shepherding meeting. It, there was a, a learning there by this group saying if we could start over, they'd find alternate ways to determine final decisions. And attendance of all members is critical uh, for, uh, for forward movement as we're trying to get a structure or foundation established. Uh, they found out that through trying to use emails to get the classes schedules, instructors signed up, that that wasn't necessarily effective. Their current struggle on this PDCA step from back in mid-December, email outcomes not optimal. Email is not the best method. It's just a method and possibly need some deadlines for class scheduling and class signups, both for registrants and instructors. And the last one there is that the shepherds can make progress when they're all present. I think that's a, a kind of an admission of, of when the shepherds did not attend certain sessions. Uh, their learning there was that uh, scoring the target condition or determining how much of the target condition that they were able to achieve. Um, uh, this is truly reflective of the clinic caught work that they're doing and allows them to pause and reflect uh, and have a brief celebration on some of the work outcomes that they've had. So some final thoughts on daily deliberate practice of the kata experimentation and on organizational culture. Uh, it's my belief that deliberate practice of new behaviors then leads to driving the formation of new habits. And I believe that those habits then are the formation that lead to either an open mindset or a closed mindset. And the sum of an organization's mindsets and behaviors, that's what makes up the culture of the organization. So in other words, kata starts here with daily deliberate practice of new behaviors so that we can move toward this, which is those behaviors actually driving the culture. 
So I want to thank you for the gift of your time, and at this point I'll turn it back over to Jacqueline uh, for um, the close.